Drew Harrisburg was 22 when he was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. After much research, he decided to go on the paleo diet, and his insulin requirements dropped significantly, and his blood sugar levels were well controlled. After seven years of this approach, he heard about the keto diet, and decided to try it out in the hope that he could further reduce his insulin requirements, and achieve even better blood sugar control. After two months on a ketogenic diet, he was so impressed with the results he was experiencing. Stable blood sugar levels, and lower insulin requirements. He felt like keto was a magic bullet. However, after those two months, everything took a horrible turn for the worse. Drew became the most insulin resistant he had ever been and lost all ability to tolerate any glucose whatsoever. When he ate even the smallest amount of carbs, he would experience a massive blood sugar spike and he was also resistant to the insulin that was meant to bring his levels back into normal range. Most worryingly of all, even if he didn't eat anything and his liver deposited glucose into his bloodstream, he could not fix his high blood sugar levels because he was resistant to the insulin he was injecting. He came to the conclusion that, quote, the ketogenic diet is a short-term band-aid solution. By removing carbs from the diet, you're simply removing a trigger that leads to symptoms without addressing the actual cause. Then, when you add carbs back in, your body can't tolerate them, which makes it seem like carbs are bad for you, but really they're the victim of something else. It turns out that high amounts of intramyocellular fat accumulation cause the cell to become dysfunctional, leading to insulin resistance and impaired glucose tolerance. I've seen numerous keto advocates demonising carbs because they personally can't tolerate them. Once again, it may seem like the banana caused your blood sugar to go up, but what it really did was trigger a symptom that was caused by a much deeper problem. Drew was reluctant to return to the paleo diet as he realised he was, quote, getting away with it because of the healthy plant foods that he was eating. So he decided to try a whole food plant-based diet. Within 48 hours, his insulin sensitivity started to return to normal. Within one week, his carbohydrate intake was the highest it had been since being diagnosed with diabetes, and yet his insulin intake was reducing day by day. Drew is an exercise physiologist, diabetes educator and sports scientist, and here's what he eats in a day. For breakfast, it's avocado on pumpkin and turmeric loaf, with a salad of greens, balsamic vinegar, pumpkin, chickpeas, tempeh and nutritional yeast. Lunch is a Buddha bowl with a grain, a non-starchy vegetable such as broccoli, a protein sauce, a starchy vegetable, a sprinkle of nutritional yeast and dark leafy greens. Post-workout is a smoothie bowl made from frozen fruit, almond milk, plant protein powder, hemp seeds, chia seeds, flaxseed meal and walnuts. Dinner is another Buddha bowl or in winter a homemade curry served with quinoa or wild rice. Snacks are fresh fruit, mixed nuts or date bombs, a pitted medjool date filled with a teaspoon of peanut butter and a dark chocolate square. Now, what keto promoters don't tell you is that the carbohydrate insulin model of obesity, the theory that ketogenic diets have a metabolic advantage, has been experimentally falsified. The ketogenic diet's proponents' own studies showed the exact opposite. Ketogenic diets actually put you at a metabolic disadvantage and slow the loss of body fat. Kevin Hall's studies found that if you cut about 800 calories a day of carbohydrates from your diet, you lose 53 grams of body fat a day. But if you cut the same number of fat calories, you lose 89 grams a day. So same number of calories, but around 80% more fat loss when you cut down on fat instead of carbs. So now, Let's hear from Dr. Michael Greger. Within days, you increase insulin resistance with a ketogenic uh, diet. The uh, largest chapter in my book, How Not to Diet, I talk about uh, ketogenic diets. Um, and uh, the data is very clear. In fact, uh, switching to a ketogenic diet actually cuts rate of fat loss in half after switching to a ketogenic diet because you're actually um, cannibalizing your own protein, but the, you get the loss in water weight, which flushes out the ketones. Um, and so you can get this dramatic, looking at the bathroom scale, um, ketogenic diet seem like a smashing success. But what we care about is not loss of water or protein. What we care about is loss 
of body fat. And actually, body fat loss slows down. That's why, uh, you know, CrossFit trainees placed on a ketogenic diet, um, their uh, leg muscles shrink um, as much as 8% within two months. Um, you know, exercise is supposed to make your muscles bigger, not smaller. But that's what happens when you go on a ketogenic diet. Not a good idea. I talk about this amazing study on prisoners in Vermont, ethically dubious study, I may add, where it was an experimental, you know, most weight loss studies are weight loss studies. This is an experimental study in obesity where they had prisoners eat as much as 10,000 calories a day to try to get them to gain weight. So to gain 30 pounds, it took 100,000 calories more per uh, unit body surface area to uh, gain weight when they were eating a, a mixed diet versus just by adding fat to the diet. It takes about 100,000 calories less to gain the same amount of weight if you're using fat. So eating a low-fat diet, you can effectively make 100,000 calories disappear. So this means to get that same 30-pound weight gain on a regular mixed diet, Researchers had to feed the participants an extra 140,000 calories, but when they did this just adding fat to the diet, it was only 40,000 calories. So basically it took 100,000 calories more to create the same amount of body fat if you do it without fat on a regular diet. So what this demonstrates is that fat is incredibly potent at increasing body fat. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment below and subscribe for more upcoming videos.